Welcome everyone to the regular monthly meeting of the Board of Commissioners held for the purpose of transacting general business of the township. Today's date is June 14th, 2023. The meeting is being held in the Springfield Township building and is also being offered in a live streaming feature via Zoom. The meeting will also be made available on the township's website beginning tomorrow morning. <clears throat> Comments will not be accepted remotely during the meeting, but instructions for submitting public comment in advance of tonight's meeting were provided as part of the posted agenda. Uh, I would like to welcome our newest commissioner, Brendan May, for Ward 7. Uh, Mr. May was uh, previously administered the official oath of office on May 17th, 2023, in compliance with the Philadelphia, excuse me, the Pennsylvania First Class Township Code. Uh, Mr. Taylor, if you could summarize any public comment received prior to this evening. No public comment was received. Okay, thank you. Um, please stand and join the Board of Commissioners in a moment of silent reflection to honor the service men and women who place themselves in harm's way in order to help preserve our safety at home and overseas. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this point, I would entertain a motion dispensing with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting as written and recorded the official minute book of the township. I'll make that motion. You have a motion, is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Few announcements uh, this evening, folks. First, I would like to announce that the Board of Commissioners conducted an executive session as part of its June 12th, 2023 ex workshop meeting to discuss one personnel item and two active litigation matters and immediately prior to tonight's business meeting to discuss one litigation matters. Also, the Springfield Township Environmental Advisory Commission will be conducting a community discussion regarding single use plastics on Tuesday, June 27th at 7 p.m. at the Springfield Township Administration Building. The discussion will include presentations from Penn Environmental and representatives from the Cheltenham Township Environmental Advisory Commission. Question and answer period will follow and all interested residents and business owners are encouraged to attend. Next announcement is with mixed emotions that the board announces that Brandon Ford, Assistant Township, Township Manager has been named Assistant Township Manager of Lower Marion Township. Lower Marion is the most populous township in Montgomery County with a staff of over 500 employees an annual budget in excess of $171 million. While the Board of Commissioners and Township staff will miss Brandon professionally and personally, we are certain he is prepared to help lead one of the largest communities in the state. Brandon's major contributions were in the form of grant writing, the environment, and intergovernmental cooperation. The Board is also pleased to announce the promotion of Craig Lloyd, Finance Director, to the position of Assistant Manager Finance Director. Mr. Lloyd has been a valued member of the Township's administration since January 2021, and during his brief tenure has been responsible for implementing new financial controls and payroll systems. Craig previously served as the Township Manager for West Pot Potts Grove Township, and prior to that enjoyed a successful career as a financial analyst and planning manager in the private sector, and he scuba dives. So congratulations, Craig. Yes. Welcome. This time, the board is now open to comments or questions from the public. The board draws particular attention to those items listed on the agenda this evening. Please be advised that once the committee reports begin, the board can no longer accept questions from the floor. At the conclusion of the committee reports, public comments will once again be accepted. However, official action on those issues on the agenda will have already taken place. Therefore, if you wish to comment on an agenda item, now would be the appropriate time. So we ask that you come to the microphone and please state your name and address for the record. So the floor is open. Well, Tom Dugan, Lebanon Road. Uh, I noticed 
and on the planning agenda committee, there was a number three item about uh, community involvement with the police force, but I didn't see that carried over to the agenda. Is that tabled or moved to another time? That, that was an, uh, it's an open discussion that will continue. There was no official action to be taken okay. tonight. That's all I want to know. Yep. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. All right, at this point, we'll go to the committee reports. Uh, I will start as the chairman of the Public Safety Committee. And I have two items this evening. First, regarding Ordinance 974 related to vehicles and traffic, I move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the advertisement of Ordinance Number 974 to amend the code of the, ta code of the Township of Springfield Chapter 107, Vehicles and Traffic, by updating the fee schedule for parking violations from $15 to $25 for most violations and adding a new section to prohibit the use of unlicensed motor vehicles such as mini bikes, mini cycles, trail bikes, snowmobiles, all-terrain vehicles, golf carts, and similar vehicles on any street, sidewalk, public, or private property. The proposed ordinance also establishes fines and authorizes police officers to confiscate and tow motor vehicles that are operated in violation of the new regulations. That is my motion. Is there a second? Second. You have a second, any questions or comments? Uh, I had a question on the uh, the fees, the fines. What would the fines be for? Operation of the vehicle yeah. illegally, yeah. up to $500. Okay. But it's at the discretion of the district justice once okay. a ticket's written. Um, I've, I have a specific question on golf courts. I know Pennsylvania enacted some recent law that some there is some legal use for golf courts. Is, how does that affect this? It's my understanding that it provided they have headlights, um, tail lights, and they are restricted to a certain speed limit, and they have to be licensed. And I think they can't cross a, a state road. Is that right? Well, Something you can't like go. They can't go over twenty five miles an hour, so okay. they can't go on any road that's posted higher than that. Okay. So, so if someone is, is doing that legally within those regulations, it wouldn't be a violation right, that under was, this that ordinance. That would not fit this. Okay, great parameter. They have to be uh, <clears throat> licensed too, don't they? Mike? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. special. Uh, they have, have a plate, plate. SLD plate yeah, or something. Have, uh, street legal tires too. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions or comments? And remind me again um, how we we chose the distinction around like e bikes. Uh, that's a separate. Uh, regulation under the state code. Uh, Chief Pico wrote a, a memo about that. Um, they've, they're, they're under bipeds, I think they're considered. Okay. So yeah, it's covered under state law. Yeah, I was just curious what trail bike was distinguishable from e-bikes, same, similar question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more of a dirt bike, what you would call it. So trail bike's really dirt bike, mm -hmm. colloquially. It has a motor. Correct. The yeah, gas motor. Yeah. There's no pedal assist. No pedals. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Uh, second item, the Springfield Township American Recovery Plan Act, also known as ARPA, a spending plan consists of 15 projects across four expenditure categories, including vehicle and equipment replacement, parks and recreation improvements, environmental stormwater improvements and contributions to the three fire companies that will be used for the replacement of fire apparatus. In order to memorialize the township's ARPA contribution to the three fire companies, a beneficiary agreement has been created to formalize the transaction by establishing requirements for record keeping, a timeline for the dissemination of funds and specified purpose of the contribution. Therefore, I move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the appropriate township officials to execute a beneficiary agreement with the Flowertown Fire Company for the distribution of $150,000 in ARPA funds to be used for the purchase of a 2026 Pierce Heavy Duty Rescue Pumper. That is my motion. Is there a second? A second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Uh, that concludes my report. And we will now go to the chairman of the Community Development Committee, Commissioner Standish. Thank you, Mr. President. This is somewhat of a long report here, so. 
to me. So first off uh, concerning uh, a land development at 902 Pleasant Avenue, on or about November 4th, 2022, Patrick Deegan, Deegan, owner of the property located at 902 Pleasant Avenue, Winmore, filed its subdivision land development application with Springfield Township seeking preliminary approval to subdivide the subject property in order to create four separate parcels upon which three new single family dwellings are to be constructed. The 90 day land development review period imposed by the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code is currently scheduled to expire on June 16th, 2023. And counsel for the applicant has submitted a letter granting an extension of time to the Board of Commissioners to take formal action on the plan. Therefore, I move that the Board of Commissioners accept a letter dated May 18th, 2023 from Joseph C. Cools, Esquire on behalf of Patrick J. Deacon, extending the 90-day subdivision land development plan review period without limitation of time. The extension of time will provide the applicant the opportunity to revise their land development plans to be in compliance with the Springfield Township Code. That is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? And my comment is, is the reason why they're doing this is because they need to accommodate stormwater and they can't do it with four units, so they're going to do it with three. That's the okay. short answer there. Any other comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Okay, next uh, concerning a land development at St. Genevieve School, I move the compliance. I move that in compliance with section 512.1 of the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code, the Board of Commissioners grant a waiver to the formal land development plan review process in order to permit St. Genevieve School to place a 756 square foot modular classroom adjacent to the existing build, school building located at 120 West Wissahickon Avenue in Flowertown. The waiver is conditioned upon the following. One, a landscape buffer shall be installed to the satisfaction of the township engineer to screen the classroom from the existing homes located on West Wissahickon by September 30, 2023. Two, placement of the classroom shall be in accordance with the plans and testimony offered to the Springfield Township Planning Commission on April 4th, 2023, and to the Springfield Township Zoning Hearing Board on May 22nd, 2023. And three, the classroom shall be placed in a two-year period, uh, I'm sorry, the classroom shall be in place for a two-year period beginning July 1st, 2023 through July 1st, 2025. And that is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Okay, next uh, is resolution number 1609, which concerns a land development at 900 slash 1000 Mermaid Lane. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1609, a resolution granting preliminary final land development approval for the properties located at 19, uh, sorry, nine, located at 900 and 1000 East Mermaid Lane in Winmore. The subject of the land development is the rehabilitation and improvement of two existing vacant buildings totaling approximately 30,000 square feet of leasable space and other associated improvements, including one, the removal of approximately 1,834 net square feet of impervious coverage, two, paving and striping of off-street parking facilities, three, construction of sidewalks along Mermaid Lane, four, landscaping, and five, stormwater management. That is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? I, I would uh, want to tell the board that I did have a follow-up conversation with our engineer uh, yesterday um, regarding this property and uh, the stormwater management aspect of it and uh, he assured me that uh, with the construction of the additional uh, swales along the uh, common border with our much improved uh, park there uh, he he estimates that there will be a 30 percent reduction in in uh, let's see, flow water flow sheet flow from the from the property which is encouraging we'd, we'd like to have more but uh, this is an existing mm -hmm. Uh, development, so the uh, the owners have have agreed to uh, those improvements that should net about a thirty percent improvement. Right. 
And those weren't water necessarily retained. required because they were there, not required. there was no additional square footage no. developed. Yeah, that's great. Any other questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Okay, and next, uh, this concerns resolution number 1610, a land development at Mount St. Joseph Academy. <clears throat> I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1610, a resolution granting preliminary final land development approval to Mount St. Joseph Academy for the construction <clears throat> of 3,800 square feet of new classroom, lounge, and hallway space at the existing secondary school located at 120 West Wissahickon Avenue, Flower Town. The approval includes full and partial waivers to the following sections of the Springfield Township Code. Uh, number one is 95-7A, 95-11F, and 95-11H, which are requiring a full survey of the property. Uh, the next waiver is 95-7H, requiring the submission of a landscape plan. Next waiver is 95 hyphen seven I requiring a traffic study. And the next one is 95 hyphen 11 I, which requires street trees along road frontage. In addition, the resolution grants a deferral to the road widening curb and sidewalk installation required by section 95 hyphen 10 A of the township code conditioned upon the submission of a plan showing the construction of a recreational trail to a specification satisfactory to the township along the property's frontage on West Wissahickon Avenue, including an ADA compliant curb ramp at the intersection of Stenton and Northwestern Avenue. The plan shall be submitted to the township no later than June 1, 2024. Once approved by the township, the trail plan shall be incorporated into the land development plans for the next phase of the development on the property and shall be constructed as part of the improvements required by such phase of development. And that is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Two comments. Um, one, what if uh, the plans for the second phase are submitted before that June 1st deadline? Well, it's a new land development application, and the same comment comes up. So that would that would trigger that would trigger them at that point, mm -hmm. right? And, and it, presumably, before you grant approval to that one, a, a trail would be added to that plan. And is there any merit to having more specificity with regards to the trail um, in terms of the dimensions or the the materials used, or is there, um, I know that it says to the um, approval of the board, but well, it doesn't say this in in this in this uh, uh, resolution. But we did talk about that to some degree in the uh, planning commission meeting the other night, and basically, they uh, we we recommended that they uh, work closely with our community trails group and the county, uh, and uh, the uh, representative for the trails is in our. Planning Commission, uh, you know, she leads it. So uh, we're, I think, all on, on track. We're all on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think my comment is just to clarify that, um, you know, a path is required and it's just requesting the path take a different shape than sidewalks. Uh, and just in layman's terms, if that was confusing to anyone. Uh, so. Did that originally come as their request to do a trail versus? The sidewalk and curbs because any trail no matter what it looks like is going to be a it wasn't their request. significantly cheaper than yeah sidewalks and curbs yeah it wasn't their request it was our they were requesting a full waiver to the obligation to put yeah. in curbs and sidewalk okay. and right. the trail was offered as a compromise yep, yep. right okay any other comments or questions all in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. all opposed nay please record unanimous vote Okay, then, a thousand. And then finally, uh, resolution number 1611, which concerns a fee in lieu of dedication of land for parks and recreation. In April 2004, the Board of Commissioners adopted ordinance number 866, setting forth the requirements for applicants and developers of residential and non-residential subdivision and land development proposals to offer the dedication of land suitable for parks and recreation activities. 
In accordance with the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code, the ordinance also permits applicants, developers, to provide a fee in lieu of dedication of land and or to provide improvements to existing park facilities. The fee in lieu of dedication of land was also established in 2004 and requires updating to keep pace with the increased land values and the costs associated with maintaining parks and recreation facilities. So therefore, I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1611, revising the fee in lieu of dedication of land for parks and recreation purposes as follows. One, $1,500 per residential dwelling unit, and two, $1,000 per 1,000 square feet of building area or portion thereof for non-residential development. So that is my motion. We, a we have a motion. Yeah. Is there a second? A second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Okay, and that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Standish. We will go to the uh, Chairman of the Environmental Resources Committee, Commissioner Wilson. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a recycling report. I'm pleased to announce that during the month of May 20. 23, Springfield Township residents recycled 191.2 tons of material with a householder participation rate of 69.9%. The net cost for the township was $23,941.73. Uh, additionally, the Board of Commissioners would like to remind residents uh, to locate refuge and recycled materials, <coughs> materials a suitable distance from one another and in clearly labeled containers, so they are removed by the proper collection crews. Unmarked recycling containers that are located too close to the refuge containers and or containing uh, uh, unsuitable materials will be treated as refuge and disposed of accordingly. Please locate your, your refuge, single stream recycling and yard waste materials apart from one another so they can be easily identified and properly disposed of. That concludes my recycling report. I have, uh, I have three motions uh, under the Environmental Advisory, uh, for the Envi Environmental Advisory Commission. Just a quick tip on that recycling. A reminder, yes. we can pick up stickers at the township building to help identify recycling, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Um, so I move that the Board of Commissioners uh, uh, reappoint Joy Berge to a new three-year term of service as a member of the Springfield Township Environmental Advisory Commission. Ms. Berge, as new term of service shall expire July the 14th, 2026. That's my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. My second motion, <clears throat> I move that the Board of Commissioners accept a letter dated May the 11th, 2023, from Chris Richter resigning his position as a member of the Springfield Township Environmental Advisory Commission uh, at the conclusion of his current term on J June 14th, 2023. The Board of Commissioners wants to thank Mr. Richter for contributing his time and talents to the Springfield Township community in particular for raising the social media presence of the Environmental Advisory Commission. That is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record your name's vote. My third motion is with the resignation of Mr. Richter. There presently exists a vacancy on the Environmental Advisory Commission. Unlike other advisory boards, the Environmental Advisory Commission consists of full and associate members. An associate member attends all meetings and functions as full members, uh, except for the, <clears throat> they do not have the voting privileges. Uh, when a vacancy occurs as full member, it is tradition to appoint an associate member to fill that vacancy. So therefore, I move the Board of Commissioners appoint Martin Ryan, currently an associate member of the Environmental Advisory Commission, 
to a new three-year term of service as a full member of the Springfield Township Envi Environmental Advisory Commission. Mr. Ryan's new term of service shall expire June 14th, 2026. That is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record your name's vote. And that concludes my reports. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. I did neglect to um, say hello to our folks uh, streaming in tonight. How many Zoomers do we have? Okay, great. So uh, thank you and welcome to those that are uh, streaming with us this evening as well. Uh, we'll now go to the Chairman of the Public Works and Facilities Committee, Commissioner Maxwell. Thank you, Mr. President. Two items this evening. First is the Boisher Field 80 improvements. On Thursday, May 4th, 2023, bids were received for the Boisher Field 80 improvements project. Mm -hmm. The subject project includes the construction of a 20-foot wide paved emergency vehicle driveway, an eight-foot wide walking path, and stormwater improvements. Bids were received from three contractors, one Plymar Construction Company Incorporated, two Associated Paving Contractors Incorporated, and three Rutch Excavation Incorporated. The bids ranged from a low of $106,750 to a high of $189,550. Therefore, I move that the Board of Commissioners award a contract to Associated Paving Contractors Incorporated of Warminster Pay for their low bid of $106,750. That is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Next item is the sale of used vehicles. Section 1501.2 of the Pennsylvania First Class Township Code sets forth the regulations for the sale of township personal property via electronic auction. Springfield Township Fleet Supervisor has requested permission to sell a 2016 Ford Interceptor SUV that was recently replaced with a 2023 Ford Interceptor Hybrid SUV. Therefore, I move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the sale of a 2016 Ford Interceptor SUV with 92,060 miles and 18,308 hours of service via the Municipid Online Public Auction Site. That is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Anybody want to buy a Ford? <laughs> Where it goes to auction? Municipid. <coughs> Very used. Very used. <laughs> Very used. Very lumpy. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. That concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Maxwell. We will now go to the Chairman of the Administrative Fiscal Affairs and Zoning Committee, Commissioner Cobb. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first off tonight, regarding the uh, bill listing, I move the Board of Commissioners approve the May check reconciliation in the amount of 882000 $213.46, and the June bill listing in the amount of $997,258.33. That's my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Uh, next, regarding resolution number 1612, an amendment to the Sterling Act. The Sterling Act of 1932 enacted an earned income tax, known as a wage tax, on both residents of the city of Philadelphia and on individuals who work in the city but reside outside of the city limits. At the time of adoption, most of the collar communities surrounding the city were farmland, and most employment and the commerce occurred in the city. Over time, however, the collar communities experienced development pressures that required more formal government services. In response, the state legislature, late legislature enacted Act 511 of 1965 to permit the collection of an earned income tax by suburban municipalities. Act 511 requires municipalities having an earned income tax to collect the tax at an individual's place of employment and remit it to the municipality where an individual resides. However, under the provisions of the Sterling Act, the city is permitted to keep 100% of the wage tax that it collects from individuals who work in the city but reside elsewhere. Therefore, 
I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1612 to request an amendment to the Sterling Act to require that an amount of up to 1% of the earned income paid by non-residents to the city of Philadelphia and collected under the requirements of the Philadelphia wage tax be remitted to the, to the municipality in which the tax play, taxpayer resides if that municipality has enacted an earned income tax. That's my resolution. You have a, that is your motion? That's my motion. We have a motion. Uh, is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? And Mike, just a history lesson, how often has this been um, requested and, and, and is it just sort of just floats around in the state Senate? Yeah, every few years this comes up. Um, in this particular case, there was a Senator from uh, Bucks County that was able to get it through the Senate. So it now rests with the House of Representatives. Hmm. Um, so we'll see where it goes from there. Clearly the Philadelphia uh, representatives uh, would not like to see it passed because it's gonna create a big budget hole for them. Yeah. Has it passed one chamber in the past? Uh, not that I recall. So it's further along than it, than it ever has been. Yeah, I okay. believe so. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. All right. Good luck, Sterling Act Amendment. <laughs> um, and then finally, regarding the zoning hearing board uh, meeting for June, uh, the Springfield Township Zoning Hearing Board will meet on June 26th at 7 p.m. in uh, this meeting hall, this meeting room, where they'll hear the applications of the following uh, two cases. First is the application of Ms. Christina Visco, owner of the property located at 622 East Gravers Lane in Winmore. That applicant has a, filed an appeal to the actions of the zoning officer pertaining to the violation letter sent to her and dated on January 13th, 2023. The violation letter is for the operation of, of a professional home office or a not, no impact home based business in violation of section 114.21 and section 114.139.2 of the Springfield Township Zoning Ordinance. The applicant contends that there is no office or business activity conducted at the property. That property is zoned within the A residential district of ward number two. And the second application is of uh, Robertson and Ferry Limited Partners, owners of the property located at 1301 Mermaid Lane in Winmore. The applicant has requested a special exception uh, to revise an existing non-conforming use from flower growing and arrangement design facility with retail sales to a snowplow storage facility in the alternative, a variance uh, from section 114-61. Uh, an interpretation of the term accessory building and accessory use uh, is the alternative, a variance has been requested as well from section 114-21 to the term accessory building, accessory use um, that would allow the storage containers uh, and office trailer to remain on the property. Additionally, a uh, variance has been requested to allow storage containers to be within 10.2 feet from the rear property line instead of the required 25 feet. And a variance has also been requested to allow a, the salt shed to remain at 20.9 feet in height instead of the maximum permitted feet of 20 feet. Uh, finally, a variance has been requested to allow for the currently installed fencing to remain eight feet in height instead of the maximum permitted feet of six, height of six feet. All that relief is requested and defined within the Springfield Township Zoning Ordinance. That property is zoned within the B Residential District of Ward Number 5, though I do believe that that applicant, uh, Robertson and Ferry Limited Partners, did request this afternoon uh, a continuance of their application. So that may, in fact, not be heard pending approval of the Zoning Board. Um, and again, that meeting will be held on uh, Monday, June 26th. 7 p.m. in this building. That's my report. Thank you, Commissioner Cobb. Uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Lee, I just wanted to point out that with regard to the last application that, that you mentioned, that the temps were already authorized my office to oppose that application. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Which is undoubtedly the reason for the continuance request. 
Thank you, Commissioner Cobb and Mr. Garrity. We will now go to the chairman of the cultural, excuse me, the chairman of the Parks and Recreational Resources Committee, Commissioner Ratzavan. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a, a motion and an announcement. First, I move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the appropriate township officials to execute an additional services agreement with BL Companies Incorporated to perform additional work at the former Tank Car Corporation of America, 1725 Walnut Avenue in Orland. The additional services include sampling, data analysis, wetland delineation, and report preparation necessary to address comments received by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection in response to the township's remedial investigation and cleanup plan. The total cost of the work shall not exceed $23,750. That is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Uh, somewhat related, the board is pleased to announce that it's creating a steering committee to assist with the master site planning efforts for the former tank car property. Um, you may remember formerly we had decided that it would be tasked to the park and rec committee, but due to some um, state obligations, a steering committee is necessary. The com committee will consist of three to four members of the township's park and recreation advisory committee a township commissioner, a staff member, and up to two residents of the adjacent neighborhood. Once formed, the committee will determine regular meeting dates and times, which will be advertised on the township's website. If you're interested in participating in the planning process for this project, please be sure to visit the township website at springfieldmonco.org and sign up to receive emails and meeting information. And uh, two additional comments I just quickly wanted to uh, make. One is uh, we did discuss pickleball uh, in Ward 2 at Wind Hill and wanted to reflect for anyone interested that uh, that is going to be discussed and uh, handled by management by reaching out to uh, local neighbors of the park. Uh, before next steps are taken. And I want to add that that just reflects an effort to really increase mindfulness uh, and courtesy to the neighbors of adjacent parklands. And then also I wanted to say thank you to Commander Marlin uh, and, and the uh, Winmore Post for allowing us to walk in, the, in their annual Memorial Day parade. It was lovely and it was a lovely day. Uh, and I was joined uh, by my fellow commissioners, Brendan May and uh, Jim Lee, and it was a lovely day. Um, and of course, a Memorial Day can sometimes be a hard day. So appreciate putting on that event and allowing us to participate in it. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Retsavon. We will now go to the Chairman of the Cultural Resources Committee, Commissioner May. Thank you, Mr. President. There's no report this month. Thank you, Commissioner May. At this time, I'll announce that the board is once again open to receiving public comment. Mary Ellen Reeves, 214 Station Avenue. Just a uh, quick question, Commissioner Wilson. Is there now an opening on the Environmental Advisory Commission since one person was sort of leveled up is from what I understand? Are you taking applications? There's, I guess, a, there's a vacancy. There will be a vacancy for the, uh, for the uh, associate. associate member. And that's a non-voting? Non-voting. Okay. And when will that occur? Will that be online? Will there be a vacancy listed uh, online? Uh, my best advice would be to come to the next environmental. Folks, advisory. I'm actually asking for somebody else, so that's why I wanted to know. Well, folks just generally show up to the meetings, okay. and, and if yeah. they're showing up three and four and five times in a row, the the committee says, "Hey, you seem to be interested. Do you want to okay. be an associate member?" And somebody just texts me to ask me if they're interested. Okay, so it's not so as much. formal as as, as, no. as, no. as I know some of the other ones are pretty formal, formal, so I just wanted yeah. to make sure. No. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Sure. Thank you. Betsy Wallace, Pine Road in Winmore. I uh, just wanted to ask about the uh, special steering committee. I know it was talked about at the workshop meeting about how many residents could be on that steering committee. And there was some talk about there being um, at, least, at least two members, but not up to two members. And I'm wondering, um, I know the resolution is now says up to two members, but what was the decision there? Could there be more residents on that steering committee? It, it's gonna be at least two. We're going okay. to send out a letter to the folks that received notice a few months ago about the plan upcoming planning process mm -hmm. um, and see how many folks want to, you know, be involved. 
Okay. And then the board can decide on the final number. If, if within the group, you know, there's only really two people, mm -hmm. if there's three, then maybe just put the three on. I mean, yeah, I just to wanted to clarify really. that. Okay, so two or more. It's going to be at least two, two to three. Right. Yeah, my, my main guess it wouldn't be more than three, just because you're yeah, you're only going to have three to four. You only have three or four park parks and rec members. Mm -hmm. um, any other public comment? All right, wonderful. At this point, um, I would accept a motion to adjourn the meeting. One quick thing I just have on the top here: the oath of office, so ceremonial oath of office. I know that was already <laughs> done, but I just forgot how that. <laughs> what we decided to do for that is <laughs> we were going to have it this evening. Unfortunately, my, my kids' schedules are oh, unbelievably right. busy. And so, um, you know, I've already had the official oath of office. Um, you know, this would be more just a chance to take a picture with my kids. Of course. Well, that's important. So, that's I mean, important. Well, yeah. you know, if you want to do it in the future and yeah, if yeah. it's convenient, we can, we can do it at any time. We'll, we'll, we'll hold just the post, invitation open. We'll post date or predate the uh, <laughs> photo. I'll, I'll check with my children. And see how yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, welcome, uh, Commissioner May. Um, did so someone motion, make that motion? motion to adjourn? All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Make questions or sure ways to buy the brand and he's watching. <laughs> Any questions <Wow>. or comments? <laughs> yeah. uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please wave the Brandon and record a unanimous vote. Okay. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our meeting.